Hey everybody, welcome back to the Dungeon Dive. Daniel here. All right, today I am here with a review for Adventure Games, Discover the Story, The Dungeon from Cosmos. Uh, let's get the really the only negative thing out of the way right at the beginning. The name of this game. Kind of ridiculous, right? This is actually the name of the game. Adventure Games, Discover the Story, The Dungeon. So, Adventure Games Discover the Story is kind of like the imprint for this series, and the dungeon is the name of this particular adventure. So that is just about the most generic name for a game I have ever seen. And if I saw this on the shelf without knowing anything about it, I don't know if there's any way I would pick it up. But I am here with the review to let you know that, yes, this game is worth your time it is worth your money this game is absolutely awesome super super fun so cosmos is also known of course for uh for many many games but recently they've been known for their exit series of escape rooms in a box this is kind of like that tangentially whereas the escape room games are very much focused on kind of hardcore puzzles and you will be like cutting things up and assembling things and really trying to, in some cases, really rack your brain trying to solve each puzzle. This series, the um, Adventure Games Discover the Story, is far more interested in having the players discover, well, discover the story to solve a narrative adventure without so much puzzle solving. Um, this game is more, I would say, more like, I'm trying to think of a good video game analogy. I can't really think of one. I, guess, I mean, you could say this is kind of in the line of the Sierra games or the old LucasArts games, those kind of adventure games, but far, far less esoteric in their problem solving but you are going to be doing similar things in that you will be combining items together to solve puzzles. You will be, you know, they call it pixel hunting in video games. You will be hunting, uh, looking at pictures, trying to look for clues and decipher things, but you're not gonna be having to use like math or logic to solve problems. You're more thinking about turn in terms of almost like a narrative, like an RPG type adventure. And really, the only negative thing I have to say about this game is the title. Um, this game is remarkable. So lately I've been playing games with my wife who, my wife, right? <laughs> my wife who historically does not really care for board games, but she's getting more into them. And um, our friends, uh, a couple who live down the street who are just now getting into modern board games. And we've played a few of the exit games together and they're loving those. We've played um, Escape, The Curse of the Temple. They loved that. We played Horrified. They loved that. So we've been slowly building up and they're really enjoying the thematic games. And this I think is the most thematic game that we've played so far and they loved it. And me as like kind of a hardcore, you know, dungeon crawler, dungeon diver, Ameritrash player, this also scratched my gaming itch because of its theme and because some of the storytelling and narrative aspects. So I'm going to review this game in the best way that I can without giving any spoilers because normally I don't care about spoilers, but this is a game that you really do want to know as little as possible going in. There are some cool twists to the narrative. There are some really neat mechanisms that appear throughout the game and you're going to be, the whole thing is just experiencing this story together with a group. So basically what you do is at the beginning of the game, you're going to each take a character. Now at first the characters seem rather lame. You just have the attentive, you know, their name and then a, a really like one trait, the attentive, the skilled, the knowledgeable and the strong. But quickly what you're going to find is as you're playing the game, 
depending on who is the subject of the passage you are reading, it is going to matter who is the strong, the knowledgeable, the skilled, or the attentive. And so even though there's only one trait associated with each character, it does make them all stand out and actually feel different. And then you also have some health cards, which you can't really die in the game, but what you can do is you can lose health and the more health you lose, the fewer points you're going to have at the end of the game, thus the worse ending you're gonna have. So if you keep more of your health throughout the adventure, you're gonna have um, a better ending. Then you get some turn overview cards. Very simple game. That's another awesome thing about this game is how dead simple it is. The rule book is tiny. I mean, half of it is just note places to take notes and um, some hints that you might need if you get stuck on something. But the game itself is super easy. You can read this once in about 10 minutes, explain the game and play it the entire time without ever having to check. Now the main components, oh, and then you also get some, uh, some little wooden uh, meeples for your, for your players. Now the main components of this game are these two deck of cards and they're separated into or two deck of cards and an adventure book. So you have these A cards and those are going to tell you your mission. And this is the first mission. So this is how you start the game. Uh, you want nothing more than to escape the dark dungeon, find the exit. Be on your guard though, who knows what else is hidden within the walls. So this is where you start. And then, so you have a small deck of cards and you have a large deck of cards. These are all, all locations. So I'm just gonna show you the very first location. And this is where you start off. You start off locked up in the cell. And each one of these numbers corresponds to an entry in the adventure book. And so taking turns, you're gonna move your meeple to a number on the board, on the map. And then you're going to find that passage and you're going to read that passage. And that is basically it. You're going to find doors. You're going to have to unlock doors. And as you unlock doors, the book is going to tell you to place other um, map pieces there. Then you'll move into this location. You'll discover more things, switches and traps and NPCs and people to be rescued and monsters to fight. And then the map is just slowly going to be building and getting bigger. And then you might find something like, I'll just show you one more, like a, like a little laboratory. And again, you're going to just going to be re moving to a passage number, reading it, and trying to figure out how to solve the narrative uh, puzzle within. And the main way you do that, besides reading, is through this large deck of item cards. So these are all numbered. I think it's like one through uh, one through 90 or so, I believe. And each one of these has items. I'm just going to show you two examples. Uh, nothing very spoiler spoilery here. Um, so you have like 21 and 44. The book might tell you to take out and like you. Are, OK, so you found a gold coin and a sheet of paper. And there are a ton of different items and NPCs that you can find in the game. And they're all represented by a card here. And there are some very interesting ways in which these cards do interact with the board and each other. So let's say that you wanted to try to use this coin on another item to combine an item to solve a puzzle. Well, what you do is, is you just take the two items and you combine their numbers and you read the lowest number first followed by the highest number. So if you wanted to combine this coin with this sheet of paper, you would try to find in the book passage 2140. And so you would look through the book and if there was a passage 2140, well, then you could read it. If there wasn't a passage 2140, then you know that this combination is meaningless throughout the game. And you can do, you can try a combination, I believe like one time on a turn. You can also combine an item with one of the numbers on the board, on your map. So let's say like this was a guy here and uh, like, like, let's say he was a, a merchant and you wanted to combine your coin with the merchant. 
you could read 21301 and then the book might tell you like hey this guy has some potions for sale trade one gold coin for a red potion one gold coin for a blue potion or maybe he has keys for sale and then you can return to that merchant later with more gold so the book will tell you like if this is your first time visiting this uh, location or this person or this item uh, read here if it's a subsequent time read here and that is basically it and you just i mean there are a ton of items there will be npcs in here there will be things you can get in here that will add to points for your overall ending because as you progress through the game eventually when you reach the end it's going to tell you to read a certain ending based on how well you've done now we played so the base the um you do have there are three chapters in the game and we played the first chapter in one sitting and then the second and third chapter in another. And I think the first chapter took us the longest. And we, we did explore almost every option that we had in that first part of the game. Chapters two and three went a lot quicker. However, there were a ton of these items that we didn't get to because I've looked through them and I'm like, oh my gosh, there were so many NPCs we didn't discover or um, items we never found. And then some of these cards, as you explore them, like let's say um, you found a secret passage in this room. It would have you swap this out with another version of that card that has additional details. And sometimes you're going to do things on these cards that permanently change the structure of the dungeon, such as like flooding with water or a crumbling ceiling or something like that. And so as we were progressing through chapters two and three, we kept doing things that immediately altered the dungeon and was it was constantly pushing us forward without the chance to go back and explore other things that we had, you know, that we had passed up. And so there are quite a few things in chapters two and three that I have not seen. So I guess that does kind of lead me to one of the other criticisms people might have of this game is I believe you could, I believe as, a, as like, as a core gamer, as somebody who plays a lot of games, I think you could probably get about two really good plays out of this game with the same group um i think there's enough in here to satisfy your curiosity and your thirst for a cool adventure story for two games now i think the game i think it's about 25 dollars. It's, 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 it's under 30 and we played with four so you know it, it really came out to less than about eight dollars per hour total for our group to play through one time and I know we could play through a second time and still enjoy it so that's like four bucks an hour worth of entertainment that is an amazing deal for such a fun time I mean we laughed we had these tense moments we had uh, like really kind of frightening moments and the whole thematic experience was just excellent and so while while you are not going to get you know dozens of plays out of this I, I it's still highly recommended because what i'm going to be able to do is is i can play this again you know another time with my wife or with a different couple we could play through the whole adventure again but then i could just loan this to another group and they could play it and we could just pass this game around until eventually the cost becomes completely neg negligible because you don't destroy anything in this game uh there are you know the book as you pass it around it's going to get it's going to get messed up however um, eventually, I don't know, we, when we were playing, it wasn't available yet, but there is an app and the passages should be on the app. And I think that would be a better experience because there are a couple times where let's say you're trying to find 2140, right? And you turn to something and 2140 isn't there, but there is a number that's like 21 something else. And you just happen to glance at it and so you can there there is a chance that you can kind of maybe spoil a a solution for yourself but i think that only happened one time while we were playing but the app will completely alleviate that because you could just type punch in the number 
and then you will get your um, your answer, your response. You'll get you'll get the, the 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 clue if it's a good combination or not right away without having to search and accidentally see something. But yes, so adventure games, discover the story, the dungeon, the worst name in video or in board game history is actually a really really great game one that i think is perfect for people who aren't super into thematic games and also for people who are super into thematic games and rarely do those two um groups like rarely is there a game that satisfies that scratches the itch of both of those groups and this does it expertly. And then there is one more game in this series out right now, and that is um, this one here. Uh, you've been assigned to break into a research facility of the secretive Monochrome Incorporated. Inside, you will find a thriller in three chapters. Can you solve the mystery behind the company and complete your mission? So I'm definitely going to be buying the second one, and we will play through it. I'm really looking forward to it. So if you guys are looking for a super light, super fun, incredibly thematic experience full of great adventure and storytelling and cooperative um, puzzle solving and narrative building, look no further than Adventure Games Discover the Story, The Dungeon. Highly recommended by The Dungeon Dive. So, all right, guys, we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.